Happy Advent, sisters and brothers in Christ. Glory, the glory of the Lord is shown around us and his light shines in the darkness. We can rejoice in him this day and every day for he is our God. He is the everlasting Father. He is the Prince of Peace. He is our eternal God and he is with us for our strength, for our comfort, for our hope and our peace. I pray that this video finds you doing well. I pray that you are watching this because you are either one surprised that the video was posted this early, um, you thought you would be watching the normal Big Springer Clover Hill video and you've not uh, you've missed church in some way or hopefully you're watching it just because you wanted to catch up on what's going on at the two little churches and find out what all is happening. This video is being posted because Big Spring is worshiping with Clover Hill on the 19th. We're having our cantata at Clover Hill, meeting at 1045 as we normally would and having a short normal part of the worship service and right after our confession we'll go into the singing and the narration of the cantata. I'm very excited about it. I love to sing. I think it is a glorious thing to do to stabilize and strengthen our souls, especially in these hard days to sing. I've had the joy of going to several uh, concerts the past few days, and it's just exciting to see such joyous, joyous things to join together with other folks and sing carols and hymns and hear others play orchestra music or just the amazing guitar work and other things that they have done to have the hear some Getty music over at Cedar Springs. It's just been a glorious week in that sense. It's been a long hard week from all the travel and different things going on. Um, but I'm glad that we have this time together and that this week we're lighting the candle for joy. Uh, sorry I don't have any candles here. My week did not go how I had hoped, but anyway, we can know that we would be lighting the fourth Advent candle, celebrating joy, that great and amazing gift that the Lord above has poured out upon us to give us joy. All those candles that we have lit, the candle for hope, for love, for peace, and for joy, these are all gifts given to us by our God, by our gracious and wonderful Emmanuel. But we have to continue to unwrap those gifts. We have to continue to apply those gifts to our lives. You know, if we have a gift and we leave it in the closet, it doesn't do us any good. Same idea, if you have a car and you never get the car out, but you walk places or you bum rides with other people or you're always worried about travel, but you don't want to disturb your car, what good is it to have the car? We have to submit to our faith. We have to submit and take advantage of those gifts of God. It's a little bit of what our our short readings and stuff will be about today is that we're trying to take advantage of what God has given to us to call upon the Lord in all of those moments. The, the psalm we're going to start with today, Psalm 140, is that very idea that we need to call upon the Lord to help us whenever we're struggling with anything, whether it's someone actually being against us, as they mention here in Psalm 140, or whether it's Whatever we're struggling with, whether we're having um, bad thoughts about someone around us, whether we're uncertain of what events are going to come about in the future or what events may happen very shortly right here with us, that we need to call upon God. But let's hear the words of the psalmist. I pray that your hearts and minds are open to hear what Scripture is saying to us, the church. Deliver me, O Lord, from evildoers. Protect me from those who are violent, who plan evil things in their minds and stir up wars continuously. They make their tongue sharp as a snake's and under their lips is venom of vipers. Selah. 
Guard me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Protect me from the violent who have planned my downfall. The arrogant have hidden a trap for me. With cords they have spread a net along the road. They have set snares for me. Selah. I say to the Lord, you are my God. Give ear, O Lord, to the voice of my supplications. O Lord, my Lord, my strong deliverer. They have covered my head in the day. You have covered my head in the day of battle. Do not grant, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Do not further their evil plot. Selah. Those who surround me lift up their heads. Let mischief of their lips overwhelm them. Let burning coals fall on them. Let them be flung into pits. No more to rise. Do not let the slanderer be established in the land. Let evil speedily hunt down the violent. I know that the Lord maintains the cause of the needy and executes justice for the poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name. The upright shall live in your presence. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I don't know how you view that reading there, what you think about it, but uh, I know for me, deliver me, O Lord, from evildoers. I find that oftentimes I'm the one doing evil, that I'm worrying over things, and it's messing me up. It's messing up a lot of people out there, I'm sure. We don't think of worrying making me or making you an evildoer, but that's what it's doing because instead of praying to God about our concerns, we're sitting there thinking we need to do something. We're plotting out what we might do to fix something we don't know anything about. We're guessing what might happen. We're presuming what might happen. We're making plans for bad things to happen to us even though we may not want them to happen. That's what we're concentrating on. We need to be doing as the psalmist do, did, as David did, to say, Lord, help me. Lord, you sustain the needy. You sustain the poor. You care for us, Lord. Be our God. Save us. Be our Messiah. Be our Savior. Let us unwrap that joy, unwrap that hope, unwrap that love, and unwrap that peace by calling upon God and trusting, trusting his word to be true. You may be thinking, Roy, what's all this got to do with scripture? Well, or not so much scripture, but the retelling of this season of Christmas. Well, let's think about Mary and Joseph. Let's, let's read about Mary first here in Luke. We're picking up in the 39th verse of the first chapter of Luke, and we'll be going down to verse 56. And in this reading, Mary has already been visited by the angel to be told that she is going to be blessed with the Savior, the Messiah. He's coming to save the people, and Mary said, let it be so. And of course, I don't think she quite understood it yet. I think she was like all of us. We're not sure what to do, because the first thing we discover is in those days, I'm picking up here in verse 39, in those days Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. She'd just been told that she was going to become pregnant with the Messiah and she ran away. You know, the... the psychological mindset that each of us have is we are called to carry the word of the Lord to the people, each and every one of us, to be that blessing, to carry the Messiah to them, to encourage them, to pray for them. Do we take upon that task or do we run away? Well, if we run away, hey, that's what Mary did, so we're in good company. But I hope we have people responding to us as Elizabeth responded to Mary as we pick up here in verse 41. 
When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women. Blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who delivered that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken by her to her by the Lord. Isn't that a powerful response that we greet people and they rejoice that we have come, that they know we are bringing good news, good tidings. I'm pretty certain that's the response I need to help me feel better about carrying out God's word. Not when I'm going to preach. I find preaching to be a lot easier than actually visiting with people, of actually knowing how to care for one another. I discover all too often I have a harsh word and a short word and perhaps hold record of wrongs on people, and Lord, forgive me. Not carrying my Savior when I'm carrying a record of wrongs, am I? It's hard to carry a record of wrongs and God's words of love, hope, joy, and peace. We need to submit to that joy as Mary does here in verse 46. Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For the Mighty One has done great things for me and holy is His name. His mercy is for those who fear Him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. Yeah, I'm not like Mary very often. I seldom get excited and glorify the Lord. That's what I should be doing. I should be submitting to joy and glorifying the Lord. I started out talking about that, going to those concerts and how joyful it was to sing God's praises. Are we singing God's praises? Are we unwrapping the gift of joy? Are we celebrating that we can have God's peace? Again, we don't have much hope if we're worrying. We're not opening that gift up. We're not remembering that God loves us if we're filled with fret and uncertainty and doubt. We need to submit to joy. We need to submit to our God and call upon him as he tells us to do, to act as David the psalmist and as Mary his descendant did, that we can carry the good news to all people, that we can have within us the word of the Lord and be that blessing. It's not going to be easy. Don't, don't think I'm saying it's going to be easy, brothers and sisters. Family of God, we've got a huge call upon us. It is just as it was with Mary and Joseph that they had a great task before them, but they trusted that God would help them to do it. Do we trust God that God trust that God is going to take care of us? Do we stop? As I was reading that Psalter, that Selah, do we take a pregnant pause, as it was, to let the words flow over us? Do we take time to dwell upon what God has said and done, what God is calling us to say and to do? Are we running off to who knows where in the hill country or wherever else to do whatever we think might keep us safe? I pray that we will take the word within us and allow it to flow out of us, that we can be that blessing. 
Joseph was known as a righteous man. And as we pick up here in the first part of Matthew, again, we're going to be reading from 18 down to 25. Would we respond like this if we had a, a vision, if we had a dream? Again, let's, let's read these words. I know we speak of them often thinking about this time, but let's, let's pray that God will allow us to hear them anew right now. Now, the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. You know, when she came back from spending that time with Elizabeth and Zachariah, it was discovered she was pregnant. So Mary came back to this. And her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. He was trying to be good and gracious and kind because he didn't know what God had done. But God was with him as he was with Mary. And well, again, let's just pick up here in verse 20. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means that God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took Mary as his wife and had no marital relations with her until she had bore a son, and he named him Jesus. I hope that gave you goosebumps. It, it still gives me goosebumps every time I read it, every time I hear it read. And I hope that I will continue to unwrap those gifts of Christmas, those gifts we talk about in Advent, that love, hope, joy, and peace that will celebrate them. I hope we're not sitting around thinking about, oh, this is going to be stressful this holiday season. I hope I can get this done. I hope I can get that done. I hope it'll all be okay. Let's not just speak about hope and worry about what could go wrong, but let's follow through as God has guided us. Let's take that pause. Let's take a moment and look at what God has done. Let's take a moment and celebrate that God is with us. We have Emmanuel now. We can trust that God is taking care of us just as the psalmist was asking God to take care of him. We can ask God to take care of us and trust that he will. We're going to have to start planning and doing as God would do, being as God has called us to be. We're going to have to submit to joy, submit to hope, submit to peace, submit to love, to do those things that that entails. Not worrying, not fretting, not getting angry, not being upset, but pausing whenever those feelings or thoughts come upon us and going with God, calling upon Emmanuel. Lord, you know I need peace in this situation. Lord, you know I am fearful. You tell me not to be afraid, but I am, Lord. Guide me in what I need to do to speak words of love, hope, joy, and peace to whoever we may beat, to shine the Lord's light out to all people. We can do it. We can be as Mary and Joseph and carry the Lord out into the world. We can birth out the Savior that people need if we will speak words of love, hope, joy, and peace. We have to submit to God as Mary and Joseph did and go with that dream of love, hope, joy, and peace that they were carrying the Messiah. Again, they just had those words. Yes, they had a vision. Mary had seen an angel. Joseph dreamed a dream. 
They had to believe in it. They had to act upon it. They had to continue to go back to it when things got rough. You know, Joseph didn't get a dream every night, or at least we don't have any record of that, you know, as he had to go and say, yeah, this is my child. That's what he said about Jesus, this baby. He was claiming it. The theological historian said, you know, Let's look at the reality. He was the joke of his town, as Mary would have been, because they would have known. People would see. People would have gossiped, just like people see and gossip now about stuff they know nothing about. If we're going to be faithful, if we're going to submit to God, submit to those gifts of Advent, we have to not worry about what they don't know about and what they may not understand, because if God has called us to it, He's going to see us through it, but we've got to go as God calls us to do. You know, Mary's name never got cleared, nor did Joseph. People can think whatever they want to. Jesus was Jesus. Joseph died before Jesus started his ministry. He had to live in and on that faith from that first thing. And sisters and brothers, we have to go with the words we have in Scripture. Are we reading these words to be reminded, to be encouraged? I mean, if we're truly going to enjoy Christmas, we're not going to do it without God. We may get some gifts. We may eat some good food. We may have some good times. But if we're not looking for the Lord, we're missing out on Christmas. We're missing out on all that God wants to do in us and through us and for us. So I pray that we'll stop, we'll wait upon the Lord so that he may renew our strength, so that we may rise up on wings like eagles, that we can run and not grow weary, that we can walk and not grow faint, that we can interact with people that may push all our buttons and still be calm, still have hope, still have peace, have love and joy in abundance. Because Emmanuel, God is with us. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lord. Family of God, let us close in prayer. Great and holy God, I thank you again that you allow us to interact even when we can't be close together. I rejoice, O Lord, O Lord, that your words continue to go out and bring about seeds of love and hope and joy and peace. I pray that we will work with you, Lord, to water those seeds, to help them to grow up and to blossom, so that they may empower us and enable us to give you the thanks and praise that you deserve and to bless our neighbors. Lord, I thank you for each one watching this video. I pray that your love, hope, joy, and peace will rest upon them. I pray that we will continue to trust you to believe in you and to know that you are out in this world doing good. I pray that we'll continue to apply your love, hope, joy, and peace to our lives and to the lives of everyone we meet and that you'll be honored and glorified each and every day. I thank you, God, and I praise you. I rejoice in you. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. Sisters and brothers, if you're seeing this early, you may have the opportunity to come by Clover Hill and enjoy that cantata. If not, I remind you that we will not be meeting in person at Big Spring or Clover Hill until January 2nd. Uh, I am taking off the Sunday after Christmas, which would be the 26th, and there will not be any in-person worship. The Presbytery is offering a online service that will be posted in all the usual places of Big Spring and Clover Hill if you'd like to watch that. Uh, I'll be posting a New Year's Eve, or not New Year's, but a Christmas Eve video if you would like to watch that as well. Be looking for that. And I pray that we can be all that God has called and made us to be, whether we are meeting in person or not. Family of God, may you know that the Lord is with you. May you trust that his face is shining down upon you and that he is being gracious to you this day and forevermore. Let us go out with his peace to love and serve the world. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Blessings to all. See you soon. Oh boy. Did I
Shut it out.